Uh, welcome everybody. Hello, hello. I'm uh, Grandmaster Mircea Parligras and uh, today I'm going to show you uh, three of my uh, of my end games. They are all played with the uh, with the black pieces. I didn't uh, really want it to uh, to choose it like this, but this is how it turned out. Um, so let's uh, let's see. The first example is uh, a game I played um, in uh, Golden Sands, Bulgaria, in 2012 with white. Um, my opponent was uh, Kigal Dimitri. Um, the, the ending was about uh, was about equal uh, uh, here, but uh, White uh, maybe tried to to push a bit uh, to push to push a bit too much, and he played H4 here, and. Uh, Um, this is uh, where I want to ask you what uh, uh, what was my reply how how did I meet this uh, how did I meet this move so you can uh, you can write uh, there in the chat um, I mean uh, the uh, the point is that uh, now the white king is uh, is stranded on g5 and um, as difficult as it seems, uh, uh, I could uh, I could get uh, threats uh, against uh, against the king. So, what do you think? Any any suggestions? Okay, so here I uh, uh, first uh, first of all I started with uh, knight e seven. Well, knight e seven allows uh, maybe um, knight e seven allows uh, among others to to exchange this. Uh, this knight and then um, the ending should be should be about equal so it it doesn't uh, it doesn't really work so something has has to be done against the king and the king is uh, well white king is stranded and uh, my opponent couldn't believe that uh, there could be threats against the king um, but yes, it's uh, it's possible to to do something. So yeah, like most of the time, everything starts with uh, with a check. So here I just uh, I just played. Uh, I gave the check h6 check. Now uh, white is uh, forced to to the only square king h5. Yes, yes, exactly h6 king h5. But uh, how about now? What uh, what did I play now? Because uh, it seems that my opponent uh, had taken this into account, and then he wants to go uh, g4, for example, and uh, free up uh, the position. And uh, also, if I move the if I move the knight uh, somewhere, just uh, he, for example, knight uh, here, let's say, he can just take the knight and uh, go here and, I don't know, I could even be, be worse for losing this uh, this ending. So this is what he was, uh, this is what he was counting on. But uh, how did I proceed here? Uh, what, uh, what did you play with, uh, with black? Okay, now the now the king is uh, now the king is in the corner, but uh, still it doesn't seem like anything is uh, is going to happen. Uh, well, f four. 
f4 is just uh, frees up the king i mean um, the king can then go to g4 obviously he he can take on uh, on f4 i don't know how exactly um anyway perhaps or uh, he could go even um, he could try even uh, let's say g4 and then i could be in uh, zone here but also for example g takes f4 is is uh, good enough so no f4 doesn't uh, doesn't work um if i go um if i go king f6 here for example he can uh, he can just go g4 and then uh, g5 so actually in this case uh, his uh, his king on h5 is uh, quite useful but there is a uh, there is one more um, one more possibility so waiting a bit for the chat knight e7 well knight e7 just takes the knight and uh, again king g6 and uh, king f8 i have to go and this ending can only be be better for for white maybe it's even winning uh, exactly knight h8 knight h8 was the move so sometimes the knight can uh, it's not recommended to go with the knight in the in the corner but sometimes uh, sometimes it's possible and it's good like in this case so i i went knight h8 and now my question to you is what is the plan of this move apart that uh, the h8 square is not uh, um, is not protected by by the bishop on d6 so you mean g, uh, g6 here? Well, g6, uh, uh, g6 he can just take on h6 and then uh, nothing happens. I mean, the king is happy there. Oh, very good, very good. There, there we go. So yes, uh, yes, the plan, the plan exactly. The plan is to go king uh, g8, king h7, and then uh, g6 checkmate. Yes, exactly. Very good, very good. Good find. <laughs> yes. Okay, now my opponent uh, realized uh, realized this plan, but uh, there is not uh, <laughs> there is not much uh, he could do about it. For example, in case of uh, d5, um, okay, I could I could just take on d5 and it's winning, but um, I might as well uh, continue with my plan, uh, king g8. Uh, yes, in the game he played g4, indeed. So here I can go king g8 and... Uh, or if he d takes e6, then king h7 followed by g6. Uh, checkmate. And if uh, bishop uh, bishop f4, then uh, king h7, bishop h6. Um, yeah, I just take the... I just take the the bishop with uh, with the winning position. So yes, indeed, in the game he played uh, he played g4, which which is uh, quite a fourth move. And now there is uh, there is no time for something else. I I just have to continue with my plan. Obviously, one white uh, wants to go. Uh, g5 and then even take on h6 or it depends if I don't have the king on f7 to go uh, g6 so let's continue with the plan king g8 uh, g5 he played king h7 well now the only um, yes exactly and now the only way to uh, to avoid the the mate is to is to take on h6 and here i had uh, two good uh, two good ways to to win the game i chose i think the the more the more spectacular one um in the game i played oh you mean g6 here okay g6 and knight uh, f7 was the the less spectacular way, yes, everybody's saying g6 and knight f7, uh, looking for that fork, yes, this is possible, so this is all forced, 
Okay, taking on e6. Yes, this uh, this is winning. I mean, knight c4, and then uh, king d5, for example. And I have several ways to win here, like uh, a knight uh, knight uh, to d2, or just uh, f4 with idea uh, knight d2. Knight f3. So this uh, this was uh, this was a good way. For example, king e4 here. King h6. King takes f4. King h5. Uh, king g3. And now knight b6. The knight goes to to d5, and uh, I'm going to win this one. Yeah. Also here, yes, indeed, knight d2. Uh, knight d2 f4 and then uh, move like uh, b4 also also wins yeah the idea is to maybe i can even push b3 or um, it depends where he goes there i can uh, but basically after b3 i i can uh, exchange this pawns and then give the knight for the d4 pawn and then just win the uh, king's uh, King and ending, but in the in the uh, in the game I was uh, tempted uh, to play something else. So I went uh, I went knight f seven here. Actually, attacking both um, the bishop on d six and uh, threatening to go g six checkmate. So. There is only one way for him to to go here. He took on g7. Now, of course, I took the the bishop before it ran away. And now he had a, he had a nice trick. I mean, otherwise, if he doesn't do it, I can just take on g7 with a winning ending um, very soon because I'm a I'm a piece up. But he played g8 uh, queen check. I have to I have to take the queen and then king g6 so now the his king activated uh, very much and uh, he threatens to to go king f6 king e6 and uh, we did not contemplate for a draw actually but uh, I had a, I had a good reply probably the only uh, the only move here and uh, I'm waiting for you to to help me win this. Well, 98, 98 is obvious indeed, but uh, it's not so it's not so good because uh, it is passive. So with such a passive defend uh, defense, the the game would be would be a draw. Uh, probably he can uh, he can push. I don't know f4 h5 h6 even here and then just switch to the other side uh yes yes exactly exactly very good chat very good so the move is 94 actually and uh this uh, this is winning so 94 has uh several ideas actually it uh it doesn't allow white king to go to f6 uh, it also threatens to go b4, knight c3, and knight a2, so that has to be stopped somehow. And another point is uh, I want to play f4 again. It's not possible to take on e4, and then knight d2 with knight f3. So, very nice move, and white uh, wasn't able to, to defend against all this. If a3, as I said, f4 with knight uh, d2 is decisive. So white went uh, d5, but uh, he gave up uh, too much material already. So I took on uh, I took on d5. King takes f5. Now knight c3. Yes, exactly. Then push push the pawns. Yeah, very good. Uh, king e5, uh, b4. Knight, uh, king d2 and uh, king a2 and uh, and white resigned so this was a 
this was the first uh, game. It was uh, quite amazing that uh, with uh, so little material, I was managed to create a, a mate uh, net, mating net. And uh, now let's uh, let's move on to the next example, uh, which is related to a, a blockade. Very interesting game as well. Um, just a moment to set it up. There we have it. So this is my uh, this is my game against. Uh, I was playing black uh, against uh, Tigran Kotanyan from Armenia. Uh, it was 2008 in Aeroflot Open in Moscow. <laughs> You're welcome. So, uh, this is towards the game. It was a long game. Uh, I was winning uh, before, but uh, the game uh, uh, continued on, on and on. And uh, now, uh, with the last move, he played the knight c3. Uh, here I had a, here I had an easy win, uh, but um, I still had to to calculate the variations and to be precise. Um, so the win was uh, okay. Uh, just to explain this ending. Uh, my pawns are quite advanced. We have uh, opposite colored bishops, and uh, uh, probably White's only hope is to create a blockade, which could have happened in the game. Uh, yes, I flew with uh, Aeroflot Airlines, um, and uh, I can use the A pawn, uh, the far away A pawn, to uh, to tangle White's uh, pieces, and then. Uh, just to push on the on the king side uh, decisively with these three pawns. Uh, well, here here I made the um, an inaccuracy. But already it could be called a mistake, uh, and I defended my pawn on a4, which seemed like uh, the easiest way to win. I mean, just defend this pawn, and then later on push the pawns here, bring the king to. Um, I don't know exactly where, but let's say like this. Uh, bring the king to, to the queen side, yeah. Then push the pawn further and win the game without calculating so much. And I have to say that in these situations it pays off to, to take your time and calculate and uh, just win the game uh, right away. But of course, uh, now I'm saying this uh, when I'm not tired uh, like I was in the game also. We are both tired and... Uh, we are getting short of time. So here, g4, g3 better. Oh, you are so eager to to push those pawns. Well, g4 is uh, actually a mistake here because it allows uh, white to go 92, and already the position is a uh, is a draw. Yeah, 92, and then uh, then I have to push this uh, this f pawn, but um, it's uh, it's just a draw. I mean, white can play. Uh, yeah, or if I push this, white can play knight c3, and then uh, uh, a4 pawn is uh, a4 pawn is falling. So yeah, that uh, that was a trap. I didn't I didn't fall for it. Uh, the win was. Uh, uh, something different. For example, I had many many good ways to win. Uh, probably the easiest was to play bishop f3, so as to avoid this uh, this maneuver with knight e2. No more, no more knight e2. And then, uh, of course, prepare to push the pawns, and uh, it can be quite uh, it can be quite decisive. For example, there is no time to take on a4. Uh, which is desirable, but there is no time for it because g4, then g3, h2, and yeah, it's game over. So let's say white goes uh, king h2 instead, then uh, g4 again. And uh, yes, my idea now is to 
uh, is to play bishop g2 and then g3 with the uh, with check very important and then of course i can move the bishop away from g2 and go h uh, um, h2 and uh, win the game so for example white again white doesn't have time for knight a4 because of uh, bishop g2 with g3 and h2 coming so let's say he goes move like um, bishop c5 and then um, I can go bishop g2 let's say uh, knight e2 what else I mean he has to he has to stop the, the pawn somehow so he goes knight e2 and now um, now I can finally play g3 check if he doesn't take on g3 then uh, let's say king there I can uh, move the bishop away even to f3 for example and then go h2 um, maybe okay maybe there are better squares like uh, bishop uh, b7 let's say in order to avoid knight d4 knight f3 but that that is also lost so after g3 uh, probably he has to take on g3 takes king g3 and then how about this ending it's opposite colored bishops and i have uh, um, a and h pawns but uh, Yeah, just uh, yeah, just bring the king to to this pawn, um, and uh, yeah, king e4 and it's completely winning. Exactly, very good. Uh, I will I will give the a pawn for the bishop on c5. So that will be a trade, and then uh, I'm going to go back with the king and it's winning because this is the the right square. It's a light square, so on the same color as the bishop. So this was this was easily winning. Uh, there were other moves that were winning. Let's say King uh, King G4 was also winning, or King E6. Uh, King E6, for example, there is uh, Bishop A3, Bishop C6. Now now this works. And uh, it is important. Now my plan is to go actually King. Uh, King to e5, and it's important that uh, I manage to drive away the bishop from the d6 square. For example, king h2, I can go g4 right now, uh, knight e2, king e5, and somehow white pieces are lacking uh, coordination, so I'm uh, I'm winning this ending. Anyway, let's go back. Let's go back to the game. Uh, when I play bishop c6, the safe move. Uh, keeping all my pawns and the position might be winning, right? This is uh, this is what I was hoping. And my opponent played uh, king h2, attacking my pawn. And now it's very difficult. I mean, my idea, I cannot even uh, say my my move was bad, but it was uh, it was a mistake indeed. What did you play here as uh, as black? G four exactly. Okay, so I played G four because this was uh, this was the plan. This was my plan to just push the pawns. But this is actually a mistake, and it uh, misses the win. Um, the only way to to win here was to go back with the bishop to G two. So going back, it's probably the, <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. But this is probably one of the most difficult things in chess to, to admit that you just made a mistake in the previous move. So yeah, bishop, uh, bishop g2 was, uh, was the right move. So now king g1, I can go bishop f3 and win as, a, as I showed you before. Or for example, if knight e2, I could go f3, uh, knight g3 check, king e6 going towards uh, b3, 
bishop c5, yeah, king t5, and uh, it's just winning. Note that uh, this bishop on g2 is very good here, uh, because uh, all the time I have stress to go f2, f1, for example, if uh, the bishop is not uh, controlling the dia diagonal. And of course, uh, here, uh, knight takes a4 wasn't possible because of g4 and uh, the variations like before, yes. Bishop on two pawns, strong. Pawn two, strong, yes. Um, but it was difficult to move, uh, to play bishop uh, g2, and all the other moves are, are a draw, like uh, king e6, he can go bishop c7, or even king g4, he can go uh, bishop uh, e7, and it turns out I cannot uh, untangle my pieces now. For example, bishop d7, just a waiting move, he can go knight d1. Um, it is to go knight f2, of course. And uh, if a3, uh, there is no time to take the, the pawn right now, so that would be losing, but he is uh, just in time to go back knight c3. And then the knight is much more active there, and uh, he's threatening to, to take the a3 pawn the next move. So, for example, f3, he can just go bishop c5, bishop e6, um, king g1, a2, and uh, here we have a nice fortress. King goes to f2 and the bishop just uh, stays on this diagonal. And there is no way for me to make progress, although I'm uh, three pawns up. But anyway, let's uh, let's go back to the game where I played g4. I mean the logical the logical uh, move, and he goes uh, very strong knight e2. Um, I played uh, f3, of course, uh, moves like uh, knight d4 don't really help because of king here takes and now there is f2 with uh, f1 queen. So yes, uh, bishop g2 and, well, there is no time for bishop g2 because f4 pawn is falling. So I have to go f3. I go f3. He goes 9g3 check, logical, and then I'm uh, switching my king to, uh, sorry, to the other side. So king e6, bishop f8, uh, king d5, going over there. And, uh, well, I have to say that during the game I was quite happy with my position, I, I was thinking, okay, there might be some blockade there, but uh, usually there are no, there is no such things as uh, blockades. So I'm just going to, to bring the king here, push the pawn and win the game. Well, things are not so easy. Uh, in the game, my opponent played the uh, king, eight, uh, knight h1 he played. Uh, it's a strong move, also, King g1 was quite strong, uh, king c4, uh, king f2, king b3, and then knight f1, and we have a blockade like uh, uh, that we're going to, to talk a bit later, this happened in the game as well. So this uh, this is a very good setup for, for white in these positions. Um, but he, he reached that uh, same position the other way with knight h1, king c4, knight f2, uh, bishop d7, of course, I have to, I have to protect my, my guy on, the, on g4. And then uh, king g3, the king activates there, but uh, there is no, no threat with the, the king. Yes, bishop d7, I played. Uh, bishop f5, just to, to limit this knight a little bit. Knight d1, king b3, there we go. I was quite happy here. Knight e3, also the knight is uh, 
is getting into position is getting to, to f1 jumping there bishop e6 again to to limit the the knight as you can notice the the g4 pawn is not in danger if my bishop is on this diagonal but the pawns are quite blocked so it's not easy to to make progress here he played bishop d6 i pushed happily <laughs> and uh, here he actually made uh, made a mistake but um, I didn't uh, I didn't take advantage of his uh, mistake. Uh, he played Bishop F8. I mean he thought okay I can just wait on this diagonal until the pawn goes to a2, and once the pawn goes to a2, then I can kick the bishop to g7 and uh, control the long diagonal, which uh, which makes sense. Uh, but uh, there are better moves. So what he had to do actually here, he had to go either knight f1 and uh, get this blockade that we're going to talk uh, later on about, or play bishop e5 uh, immediately, and then uh, bishop c8 again, uh, king. King f2 with uh, with knight f1 coming and he is in time to set up the blockade. But in the game, of course, there were many mistakes, and uh, I only found found out these mistakes once I analyzed the game more in in, uh, in detail. So bishop uh, bishop f8, and here, yes, you you said right. Yes, uh, a2 was the good move. <coughs> A2. So a2 was winning, but uh, in the game I played king b2, which seemed uh, to be tempting as well. So how how is the win after a2, bishop g7, and what do we do now? This is not uh, this is not easy. But I'm waiting for your feedback. Well, there is no king c2. The knight is controlling that square. Yes. So there has to be something else. I mean, this uh, this knight over here and the bishop seems uh, seem to set up some kind of blockade. Because my king is, uh, all these squares are not uh, not available for my king. Um, but, for example, uh, if I uh, if I mark the time with bishop d7, then there is time for knight f1 getting into that fortress. But I have a. Uh, h2 he just uh, takes the, the pawn so h2 doesn't work just i'll just uh, take it but it's the other way around so i could uh, i could uh, play f2 very good yeah f2 here was uh, was very strong with idea uh, bishop uh, c4 and uh, here if he takes on f2 then i have h2 finally King g2 and g3, and uh, now this is uh, this is finally winning. I'll be able to to bring my bishop to this diagonal like this. Uh, and uh, after f2, if he goes bishop e5, then I can play bishop c4 to force him to do something. Then king f2, and then the the same story. Uh, there is no bishop h2 because of a1 queen. So king g2 and g3 and uh, and it's winning. But let's go back to the game. So I played um, king b2. I mean I wanted to, to activate my king first because as we saw 
uh, in this line I thought okay he could have this this blockade my king is not is not going anywhere I missed of course I missed this idea <laughs> yes hardest part of the board yeah so king b2 was logical because I wanted to to break this uh, this blockade obviously and now um, now there comes another mistake uh, the way to go was to to play knight f1 reaching the blockade that we're going to talk about or even bishop g7 and uh, knight f1 but in the game he goes for the check he wanted to harass my king then um, king to king c2 knight e3 king d2 king f2 and here here I missed the win. How did I miss the win, guys? Too many mistakes in this ending, but it's a very instructive ending. Yeah, g3, g3 was g3 was the win. Very good. G3 was the win. And a2 was my move. <laughs> okay. A2, well, for those of you who said a2, it's a grandmaster move, but it's a mistake. <laughs> so I, I was playing black. I was playing black here. So g3, king f3, a2, bishop there, and g2 is uh, is winning. I, I'm going to play if king f2, just g1, queen, take, take, and king all the way here, take, and the win the pawn ending. Unfortunately, in the game, uh, in the game I said, okay, there is no difference, I just go a2, and yes, in the game he played bishop g7 blunder, and uh, then I won, bishop g7, then g3, because I saw it, and uh, yeah, he couldn't believe it, king f3, g2, and king f2, g1, queen, this was the, this was the game. Note that there is no knight g2 because of uh, bishop d5 or even h2. But, as I promised you, there was this very nice blockade. And here he had an in-between move, namely knight f1 check. Very strong. And we finally reached that uh, blockade position that I, I, I was telling you about. Um, already for, for some time. So king c1 and now bishop g7. And it turns out this is quite a... Uh, or king d3 but it doesn't make much of a difference like bishop g7. Um, and it turns out that there is no way to make progress here. Because all the time if I go king b1 then there is 92 check and so I cannot... Um, I cannot promote my, my pawn. Um, on the other hand, if I go uh, bishop uh, bishop c4, then he plays uh, knight h2 and he attacks my pawn on g4. So the bishop has to go back and then the knight goes back. And uh, otherwise, if I just mark the time with the king, let's say king c2, he can uh, he has uh, many many moves with the bishop. <laughs> yes, I mean, this this is unbelievable because the pawns are so close to to promoting. Okay, there are opposite card bishop and this is this I think it's an amazing blockade. And also it it doesn't work to bring the king here because he will uh, um, he will always have uh, have checks. So, for example, if I bring uh, just to show you if I go like this there you go check and then back <laughs> and if I go like this there we go check so there is no no way to make progress here and uh, yeah this this would have been a draw so this is why I wanted to show you this this example because it's a, it's an amazing blockade I I think yeah, this is draw. In the game I won, but I was I was lucky and it was a game full of mistakes. But I think it was quite instructive.
despite the fact that we both uh, we both blundered but we were after a very long game and we are short on time and you know it's the pressure all right, so let's see one uh, final example for today. Let's move on to the next one. A very interesting game. My game against uh, uh, Zoltan Ribli, played in 2008 in Bundesliga, German Bundesliga. I was playing for the Trier team then. I was black. And uh, okay, this this is where we start. We have just exchanged uh, on uh, on e6 uh, uh, bishop for for the knight. And this is actually a theoretical position. There, are, it comes from uh, from Marozzi with uh, with black. I was playing this with black. Uh, the line where. Black takes uh, swaps the knight on the the knights on d4 quickly, and then uh, pushes uh, a5 a4 in order to gain space on the queen side. So we can notice here that White has the pair of bishops and uh, uh, the Marozzi grip, which give him some space advantage. But I have the the very strong dark square bishop. The knight on c5 is is. Uh, nicely placed and also I gain some space on the on the queen side by pushing the a pawn so okay white is the move here he played rook b1 which is a logical move um, if bishop takes e5 uh, probably the best is to take with the d pawn and then put the bishop to, to d4 although it may not be so so much so rook d7 bishop e2 Rook d1, um, king f7 to defend here, and rook b7. Probably slightly better for black. But it makes sense to just play rook b1. And now, um, now I went king f7. He goes king f1 to, to bring the king in the, in the center as well. Here he offered me a draw. And uh, normally I would accept the draw, but uh, it was a team competition and I saw that uh, I'm not risking so much. And uh, I could uh, always make, uh, make a draw later on. And so I decided to, to play on. I, I went uh, rook a6 here with the idea to, to activate the, the rook over here. Rook b6, rook b4 which uh, seemed uh, interesting white goes uh, bishop d1 now uh, in order to to parry this i mean after uh, rook b6 then just uh, bishop c5 rook c5 and bishop a4 rook c4 uh, bishop b3 with an equal position So I had to I had to continue with my uh, with my plan, and I went uh, rook a8 here, and again I want to go rook b6 rook b4. He goes uh, g3. Just uh, this is a a useful move. Uh, rook b6 finally. And now this was an important moment uh, because he played uh, a3, which uh, which is a weakness. Uh, during the game, I saw the the correct con continuation. So rook c2 was better in order to to prepare f4 and e5. Actually, he cannot do it immediately uh, because of knight e4 and uh, the rook is hanging here. Although my own rook is uh, hanging on b6. So rook c2 was good, and now if I go rook b4, um, he could just repeat the moves like bishop d2, rook has to go back, and uh, bishop e3, 
And uh, well, I cannot go A3 here because it's just lost after B4. Is this pin, and uh, he will be able to to defend his rook on B1 after rook C1, let's say, and then take my knight. So he he played A3. Uh, just uh, he wanted to, to avoid this rook before, but it was better to defend it by, by rook c2. So I went uh, rook c6. And now if he, if he just waits like uh, bishop e2, I can go knight b3, uh, rook d1, rook c8 with, uh, with pressure. And my idea is to go b6, knight a, uh, sorry, not so far, knight a5, and uh, then uh, target. Uh, the c4 pawn but in the game he just uh, he just took on c5 and uh, he was hoping to have uh, good drawing chances because of the opposite colored bishops so rook takes c5 the best if i take with the pawn then just f4 followed by e e5 it's it's about equal so I have to, to keep the structure like this and uh, now attack the c4 pawn. He goes uh, bishop e2. And now again uh, I, uh, I went uh, back to my, to my plan and I go rook a6 with idea rook b6. Uh, to put pressure on the b2 pawn which is uh, fixed there. Well what... Uh, what uh, should white do here? I mean, white is on the defensive, and uh, in the game uh, he played h4, a useful move just to gain some space on the uh, king side. But actually, probably it was better to go b4. But, well, it's not easy to decide about upon such a move. Then pawn takes, rook takes, and rook a7, and followed by rook uh, rook a5, and it's still. Uh, it's still pressure. However, in the game he played uh, h4. Now, of course, I continue my plan. I mean, this is what you have to do in the ending. Just make a plan and uh, stick to it. Uh, rook b6. King g2. And here I was tempted to play this bishop c3. Here he, he gave up a pawn, if uh, he goes uh, rook c2 then I can uh, play bishop d4 and then uh, followed by e5 and this looks very strong but actually, and it probably is, but actually I didn't manage to find a winning plan for black. However in the game he decided to not to allow me to put the bishop to d4, he played rook d1. And then I I, uh, I grab the pawn. So rook b2, rook takes, bishop takes, uh, rook b1. I took on a3, finally. Now he he definitely has to get rid of the a4 pawn. So yeah, bishop f a3, yeah, rook a1, bishop b2, rook takes a4. No, there was no, no point to take on b7 because then the a4 pawn is... Uh, uh, winning immediately the game for example something like this um, I don't know maybe rook rook a5 followed by bishop here a3 a2 it's a win so this was the only way to to take the a4 pawn now I played bishop d4 he goes f4 of course he wants to um, activate his bishop and now it was an important moment i think i played the uh, right here so i went e5 to exchange the finally exchange the double pawns he played rook a8 i think this was slightly worse maybe it was better to go h5 and try to uh, try to exchange some pawns there as we all know uh, the defending side should try to exchange pawns 
However, he had this idea to go to KJ. Um, I took on f4, took. And here, here it was an important moment that I want to mention it. I played, uh, I was not so accurate, I played uh, rook c6, trying to play rook b6 and activate the queen, the, the rook. Uh, but I had a better, not, not e5, I had a better move here. I, uh, I could have played with the same idea, b6 and rook a5, and uh, it turns out that um, if I exchange the rooks there, it's just winning. And otherwise, I have I defend my b6 pawn and I can activate my rook very easily. So here he just goes rook a5, uh, rook b8. Uh, the uh, descending is is just lost here. Yes pawn up and pass pawn is just lost. And here my rook is suddenly very active and this, this is winning. However, in the game I played rook c6, so I had this, uh, I wasn't sure about that ending or maybe I missed something. I don't know, it happened 12 years ago. <laughs> so rook a5, he played well. And now again, now I had to go e5, it was, uh, it was very strong. But I played b6 instead rook d5 and again the last moment it was to play e5 and uh, secure that bishop in the center bishop f6 here i was i was a bit imprecise h5 in order to to exchange some pawns e5 took and here he was down to down to seconds on the clock and he took the took a wrong decision. There, he he took only five. He wanted to exchange pawns, as I said. As a rule, it's good to exchange pawns in the ending. But there were better moves like king g3 in order to activate the king. When I take here, just go there. It's uh, still better for me, but white is very active. Or even f5 was. Uh, yeah, it was very strong. And here, here it's uh, it should be a draw. So also the f5 pawn can be strong. And uh, white is uh, white is very active. However, he played he took on e5. Bishop. Uh, uh, bishop takes e5 and uh, here he still had a chance to play king f3 um, king f6 hello there uh, king is 3 and the uh, position is slightly better for me but uh, like this it doesn't allow my bishop to, to c5 but uh, he played rook b5, again, this was uh, a bit imprecise. But I have to say it's uh, quite difficult to play this descending with white, with the white pieces. Uh, the whole point is if I manage to bring the bishop to c5 here and then unlock my, my rook. And I played king f6, which is good, first to activate my king. This is too early because of rook d5 with e5. So I went king f6, rook b3, king g5, uh, activating the, the king all along, king f3, bishop d4. Now it's finally time to activate this bishop and uh, the rook, finally the rook, because uh, it was stuck there for, for too long. King g2, and now, now I played rook c7. As you, as you can notice, uh, I can bring the bishop to c5 it's, uh, if necessary. And then uh, the rook is coming uh, with uh, decisive effect. Uh, rook d3. And bishop, uh, bishop c5 was, was very good. Rook g3 check, king f7, bishop d3. 
Here he had an idea to play uh, e5 and uh, take my pawn. But I paired this with rook g7. Apparently the rook is not so active there, but uh, uh, it uh, will help me uh, push my pawn and the uh, king can, uh, sorry, the king can go over here. I played king f3, bishop d4. And now the bishop returns to e5 uh, once the b6 pawn is not attacked anymore. Rook g2. Well, the, the game ended uh, quite quickly now. Uh, bishop e5. I'm from Romania. Uh, king g4. Rook a7. So, yeah, now the, the game is over for, for white because the, the rook is coming into play with the decisive effect and as you may notice I didn't uh, weaken my position here yet with g5 so there is no way for white to, to do anything rook f2, king g7, bishop f1, rook a1, bishop g2 well he can't, he can't really defend here, bishop f1 uh, rook e1 so as you can see I can attack his pawns and uh, the g5 pawn is going to decide the game bishop d3 he's defending them both okay here i um, i repeated the moves a, a bit rook g1 king f3 rook g3 king e2 now i cleared the the path for the g pawn and the g pawn is ready to is ready to run i played g5 maybe bishop d4 was uh, followed by g5 was was even more precise but this was uh, this was good enough so yes i'm uh, i'm from romania grandmaster from romania rook f3 he played uh rook g4 of course uh, it's, it's not my intention to uh to swap the rooks bishop c2 but now you see he he didn't manage to attack my pawns anymore so my pawns are safely protected by this bishop and his bishop is uh, very bad just uh, um, trying to defend uh, the pawns and uh, my g pawn is uh, soon enough uh, going to be very strong like pushing to g4 g3 uh, queening and uh, uh, this setup, bishop, uh, bishop rook versus bishop rook with the opposite colored bishop is very strong. So rook h4, rook b3, check, king d3. And here I sack the b6 uh, pawn uh, because the g pawn is already deciding. I had to calculate, but I, I calculated uh, this until the end. Well, uh, that plan with the bishop to d5 doesn't really help because it doesn't stop the g pawn. So it it wouldn't stop the g pawn actually. So rook b6, g3, rook b1, and here there are many ways to win. But uh, what I played was the most precise: rook f2, rook g1, and finally g2. Fi uh, followed by bishop uh, bishop h2 and white resigns since after for example king is three the, the bishop is uh, falling okay so these were the games for today i hope uh, they were entertaining and uh, instructive although they they contained uh, some mistakes, some of them more mistakes, some of them less. Um, this, uh, this is all for this evening. Uh, thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.